This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. All right, we're still on um, exercise two uh, from the chapter on risk and uncertainty. Uh, and we've done parts A and B. So part A, we set up our uh, payoff table, our profit table. And I said, keep hold of it, there it is. In part B, we then went through uh, using the four different decision-making criteria, um, deciding what size contract to sign. So uh, I've said, learn those four, it's better value, maximum, maximax, minimax, regret. Uh, part C, now before I explain what it means and uh, how we deal with it, um, part C always is based on expected values. And so because I'm going to need it, um, if you've been copying this down or you've got in the course notes or look back to the last lecture, when we made the decision on expected values, now I'm not going to repeat it all because we have done it, but the decision on expected values, I'm trying to find out what it was myself, um, yeah, we contracted for 700 units and the expected value, the average in a sense, was 4,500. Now, so I'm not going to do that again. We've done that in the last lecture. But our expected values, we had to have the expected value for each of the choices. The highest was 4,500. And it was if we contracted for 700. All right, well, I said enough about that at the time, but now let's read part C. It says, what is the most that John would be prepared to pay in order to obtain a perfect knowledge as to the level of demand? Now, let me explain what that is. You see, in part A, we had no idea what the demand was going to be. We knew it would be four, five, seven, and nine. And therefore, with lots of possible outcomes, and we took the average and we said, fine, if we go for 700, the return won't be four, five, it'll either be four, one, four, six, four, six, or four, six, but on the average will be four, five, and that was the best. But suppose I were to tell you that we can pay to have market research done and the market research will tell us what the demand will be before we make the decision. It will remove the uncertainty. So I'll pay for the market research. They'll tell me how many uh, we're going to, uh, what the normal demand is going to be. And then we'll have no problem making the best decision. The only problem is I don't know in advance, obviously, what answer the market research are going to give me. That's why I'm employing them. But what's going to happen, if we use market research, what's going to happen is the market research people tells me normal demand and then we make the best decision. It may sound very obvious, but remember, my little problem is I'm deciding whether to use them, you know, I'm going to have to pay for them. They charge me a thousand dollars or something. Uh, and only once I've paid them will I find out what the demand is actually going to be, and then I can make the decision. And we've got to decide how much is it worth paying. You know, I can tell immediately if they charge me ten thousand, I'm certainly going to pay ten thousand possible profits. 
but how much would I pay them? Well, watch me carefully. It's arithmetically, it is so easy, it's untrue. But it's one of those things, if you don't get it straight, people end up doing all sorts of stupid things. Think it through. Suppose we paid for market research. We then sit back and wait until we get an answer. And the answer come back, so the answer from the market research They'll tell me what the level of normal demand is going to be. And obviously, we know it's going to be 4, 5, 7 or 9. They'll come back with an answer of 400 or 500 or 700 or 900. They'll come back with one of those four answers. And depending on what answer they give me, I'll then make the decision on contract size. And what decision will I make? Well, if they come back with uh, telling me normal demands 400, if I know it's 400, well, there's no argument. Uh, I choose whichever, I'll make the decision whichever gives the highest profit. I'll contract for 800. And I know what return I'll get. I'll be guaranteed to get 4,400. I make the best decision. On the other hand, of course, they may come back and tell me it's going to be 500. And they, they give me the right answer. Perfect research. But if they turn, come back and have found out it's going to be 500, which would I choose? I'll go for 700 contract size. And I'm guaranteed to make 4,600. And similarly, if they come back and they've discovered the demand is going to be 700, uh, I will contract for 500 and I'm guaranteed to make 5,000. And finally, if they tell me they've done the research and they've discovered the, the demand is going to be 900 a week, uh, I'll contract for 300. It'll give me the highest return at 5,400. Now then, that's what will happen if I pay for research. Remember, they'll come back with one of these four answers. But I don't know in advance which answer they're going to give me. You know, if I knew what the answer was, we wouldn't have needed to employ them. Uh, but, you know, I'm having to pay them money, and I don't know which answer will come back. They'll come back with the right answer. It'll be, they'll come back with one of those four answers, and depending on which answer they gave me, I'll make the best decision. I'll end up with one of those four profits. What's the probability they'll tell me demand is 400? It's perfect research, and surely, since we uh, already know there's a probability of demand being 400, we know the probability is 0.2. There must be a 0.2 probability, that's the answer I get. So there's a 0.2 probability, they take 400, and therefore I get 4,400. Uh, similarly, a 0.3 probability, they tell me it's 500. A 0.4 probability of it being 700. A 0.1 probability of 5.4. So if I do buy this research, I'll end up what, with one of those four probabilities. Sorry, those four profits with those probabilities. What's the expected return if we buy the research? As always, multiply and add uh, 880, 1380, 2,540. The expected value with the research. 
8, 16, 20, 2, 10, 13, 18, 1. It's 4,080 words. <coughs> So, if we buy the research, I have an expected return of 4, 8. If we didn't buy the research, now I say this is always done by expected values. But you see, that's why I wrote that up before. In part B, when we didn't have the research, and we used expected values, we chose to contract size 700, the expected return was 4,500. And therefore, what's the most I'm prepared to pay for the research? Uh, I'm prepared to pay up to the difference of 300. Uh, some people argue, hmm, 299, uh, but you know, the, the break even. Uh, buying the research uh, means we can make better decisions and gives a higher expected return. The amount you're prepared to pay for that research is limited to the extra return we can make. So I hope you agree with me when I say arithmetically that's not hard. You know, we've already done all the work. Um, but it's one of those funny things, surprising how many people can do the rest of it perfectly. Uh, and here do all sorts of strange things and, and go nowhere. I actually think that's all rather stupid. You know, because the amount you're paying for the research is a fixed amount, you know. You agree to pay them 200 or whatever we agree. And of course, you're not going to get back 48 at all. You may end up with 4446, 5, 5, um, I think it starts to be a bit silly. And of course, you can see we call it perfect knowledge because we, uh, we assume the research is perfect. If they say demand is 400, it will be 400. If they say it's 500, it will be 500. Well, I think in real life, there's not such a thing as perfect knowledge. The market research may do a very good job, and it may be very likely to be correct. But, you know, it's like opinion polls in, in elections. They may ask several thousand people who they're going to vote for. But very often, the actual re the results of the election are different. You, you know, you can never... Um, find out accurately. Fine. All right, well, at last we've finished exercise two. I'm going to have another break. In the next lecture, we'll go through something which is slightly related, but a bit different, uh, decision trees, which is on the next page. So, um, next lecture, exercise three. <laughs>